Let's welcome in our powerhouse panel and get some reaction. Joining Allison and I from Project 21 is National Advisory Board member and radio host Christopher Arps and former Deputy Press Secretary under President Trump and Newsmax contributor Hogan Gidley. Uh, panel, great to have you on this morning. Again, the president set to speak almost exactly two hours from now in Brussels. Um, Hogan, you've been there uh, to NATO headquarters on, on Leopold Boulevard there in Belgium. Um, this building is really, I mean, it's almost the size of the Pentagon. It is an enormous building. Right as you walk into the main entrance, they've got a big giant slab of what was once the Berlin Wall, um, which I think is, mm. you know, that sends a, I, I think that's important because here we are, Vladimir Putin wants the, wants Russia to return to what it was before, the Soviet Union, uh, before 1991, before the fall of the Berlin Wall. What, what is it like there? Well, you described it uh, very accurately. It's a cavernous building. It is, I would argue, somewhat European in architecture. It is all glass. You can see all the way through it. It is, it is a massive, massive structure. They're clearly quite proud of it, too. I mean, it is something to behold. Um, I do think it's interesting that there are so many little pockets for journalists to hide and get ready to ambush people <laughs> walking mm. through um, Obviously, leaders are going back and forth. Their details are everywhere. It is a really... Uh, you know, beehive of activity uh, with people everywhere. Um, it, it, its grandiosity, though, uh, really does kind of amplify and signify exactly what it set out to do, that it is a, a group of nations set on, um, you know, making peace all over the world, standing together in a common cause. And so when you have a leader uh, from the United States there who is the head kind of, of that messaging, of that ideology, uh, it obviously makes it a more significant, more stalwart type organization, and the building carries with it a different connotation, whereas you have a weak leader, obviously the opposite is true. Yeah. If you're just joining us, uh, President Joe Biden is set to address the world at 9.15 a.m. Eastern this morning. If we can get that, that live shot of uh, NATO headquarters again, um, as Hogan was just describing. So that this tier, this sort of half-round tier that you see, uh, beautiful sort of modern architecture, there are seven more like that, exactly the same, uh, behind it. This building splits off um, almost, almost like, a, like the letter T, uh, and, and there are seven more that look just like that. So this is a massive massive structure. Um, I think as this is all happening, we've got to look at history. Today's speech, no matter how it goes, is going to be historic and is going to play a role in how this war ends one way or another. Um, President uh, George H.W. Bush negotiated the end of the, uh, the Cold War. Really, he got the credit for it with Mikhail Gorbachev in the fall of the Berlin Wall. They made sure that uh, in 1992, when Clinton took over, that Ukraine didn't have any more nuclear weapons. And I'm telling you, um, when Vladimir Putin first became, he went from prime minister under Yeltsin, Boris Yeltsin, to president. He wanted to join NATO. He wanted Russia to be part of NATO. And I know we all look at that and say, well, Russia, part of NATO. Why not? They're part of Europe. Was that a mistake, Chris? Well, I think looking back, you would, could say that it was, it was a mistake. I mean, Putin, um, at that time, he was a new leader. Um, seemed like Russia wanted to join the family of nations and, and get rid of their despot uh, communist uh, past. But as we've seen, Putin is a KGB agent, and uh, he, is, uh, he is showing his true colors in Ukraine and uh, very fearful that he's going to go beyond Ukraine and go to Poland and uh, some of the NATO countries. Mm. Hogan, yesterday when President Biden was boarding the plane, he was asked what was he going to say, and he said, quote, all I have to say is I'm going to say it when I get there. Is this comforting? Because we need strength. <laughs> uh, not much Joe Biden says is comforting these days, but he does have the opportunity here to kind of begin to drive world events as opposed to just react to them. Um, he has not been doing so to this point. Uh, look, I look forward to his, his talk. I'm sure it's going to be about unity. I'm sure it's going to be about a global effort to stop Russia's advancement. But at the end of the day, I don't know how crippling any more sanctions will be unless it really focuses on Russia's energy production, right. uh, relationships it has around the world, and whether or not we here at home ramp up our energy production. You can still be, be beholden to the Greens by saying, look, we're reducing carbon emissions. We're doing all of our things like the Trump administration did, by the way, we got out of that sham Paris climate accord. But we have to produce energy at home so we're not beholden to countries like Russia. Yeah. It, it is 
obvious to so many why he won't do that is, is really perplexing. Well, Russia's got half of Europe over the barrel right now when it comes to uh, supplying yeah. energy. Again, 40 percent of Germany's energy comes from Russia. But, Hogan, you make such a good point. You th think about peace through strength. That's not a Trump original. That goes back to Joe Biden. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower uh, uh, governed the same way. But Joe Biden yesterday basically saying to American companies, corporate America, get ready for cyber attacks from Russia. Instead, could you imagine Joe Biden's predecessor saying that? Instead of saying get ready for cyber attacks, peace through strength, he would say something to the effect of, if you attack, if you cyber right. attack American companies uh, or the U.S. government, this is real, what we're going to do to you. Okay? Real, real quick, though, I have to point out, remember, it was Joe Biden who said, hey, I talked to Vladimir Putin. I told him, here are the areas you yeah. Here are the 16 <laughs> entities that you cannot <laughs> you can cyber attack. this, but don't attack. touch that. Yeah. <laughs> Them. Of course, it's a blueprint. This guy's it's a just playbook. Been... Yeah. Okay. So on the other side of this, um, we all think that that Vladimir Putin and the Russian army are are infallible. Um, they are this 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 you know this giant that um, this great army and, and Putin is is this you know this maniacal um, genius. Look. Things are not going well for the Russian army. We, we have a video that was intercepted. Um, this is a phone call between Russian troops, uh, Russian troops in command. Um, we had to verify this. So it took us, you know, an extra beat to actually make sure this was legitimate. Uh, if you're at home, take a look at this. It's, this gives you an idea of how things are going for the Russian troops inside Ukraine right now. Again, according to the UN, these numbers are tough to verify, but this is the United Nations. They say Russia has lost over 15,000 troops. In 10 years in Afghanistan, in the 1980s, Russia did not lose 15,000 troops. Take a listen. Let me tell you, 50% of our troops suffer from leg frostbite. Here, let me tell you, they couldn't even properly transport cargo 200 out of here. They've been riding around with us for five days. It was the fourth day, and you know what the commander said? Get this, it's not secret that this operation is going to be over in the mere hours. These mere hours are still ticking. Let me tell you, we've got bombed by our own planes. Okay, so take that for what it's worth. Um, it is legit. It does not seem like things are going well for the Russian army in Ukraine right now. And my goodness, the Ukrainian people are, are, are putting on quite a show with very limited resources. Um, we could have restocked them after Crimea in 2014. Joe Biden and Barack Obama chose not to do so. NATO chose not to do they so. They gave them blankets. They gave them blankets. Those are great when you're cold. Um, and it is cold over there. Panel, we'll pick this back up in just a little bit. Hogan, Chris, good to see you. Thank you.